Good evening, everyone. Good evening. If you could uh, take a seat, and we'll come to order as uh, I call the joint meeting of the Senate Reapportionment and Redistricting and House Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Committee Town Hall meeting to order. And so we're going to begin as we do Senate and House meetings, and we're going to begin with prayer. And Representative Don Hogan is here, and I think we have the privilege of being in his district. And Representative Hogan, if you would open us with prayer, we'd be most appreciative. Very important decision that we're having to make. Uh, and we need to give it a lot of thought. People need to ask questions tonight. So uh, uh, we hope everything goes real well, and I think it will. Almighty God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this community in which we live, the environment, and all of our friends that we have. May we, may we be deliberate in, re in the redistricting of our state. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Representative Hogan. We appreciate that. Well, good afternoon, folks. My name is John Kennedy. I serve in the Georgia Senate. I represent the 18th District, which is in Macon, in six counties around the Macon area. I'm also privileged and honored to serve as the chair of the Senate Reapportionment Committee. Uh, and in a moment, you're going to hear from the House Chair, uh, Representative Bonnie Rich. Uh, we heard from Representative Hogan, and thank you for that. You also happen to be seated uh, in the 3rd Senate District, which is represented by Senator Sheila McNeil. Sheila could not be here this evening, but I know that she is joining us by Zoom, so she's watching this. And also, she has sent Mr. Cody Smith. Cody, raise your hand so folks know that you're here on behalf of Senator McNeil. If you want to speak to him after the meeting this evening, feel free to do so. Uh, I want to welcome you to this. As Representative Hogan said, this is a very important process that we go through. Representative Rich and all the members of the committee that you see before you or on the dais tonight, uh, this afternoon, are very appreciative for you coming here. The purpose of this is for us to hear from you. So we want to be sure we're hearing from you, and in addition uh, to the uh, in addition to the elected officials that we will hear from during the process of redistricting. We're going to go through a couple of processes, and let me tell you a little bit about the ground rules for tonight. Um, first, uh, this is the sixth meeting that we have held uh, at various places around the state out of 11 public hearings that we will hold across Georgia to hear from the public about redistricting. We've had significant interest in this hearing, and based on the number of folks that we've had sign up on the sheet, everyone's going to have about four minutes to speak tonight. There's no magic to that other than Chair Rich and I take the total allotted time of the two hours this evening and divide it by the number of people that have signed up. And so that's how we get to around four minutes. Um, and so uh, for everyone who has uh, signed up uh, and gets to speak, that's great. If you did not get to sign up and you want to submit information, we're going to talk about that as well. Um, so we're going to have several more meetings around the state coming up. Some are in person, and we're going to have one more on Friday that we will have. We will host in Atlanta, but it will be the second of our two virtual hearings that we're hosting for folks to give us the opportunity to receive your thoughts and input. We've got, just by way of a public service announcement of the remaining hearings that we have, uh, tomorrow afternoon and evening we'll be in Albany. On Wednesday, we will be in Columbus. On Thursday, we will be in Macon. And on Friday, we will have our virtual town hall, which will be cited for the chair and I to be at the Capitol. Um, in each of these meetings and hearings, we want to hear from you, no matter what your thoughts are or, or from what part of the state you come. We want you to tell us about your ideas, about the process, and about the plans that we will roll forward with regard to drawing the maps. Um, secondly, we'll be collecting written comments about uh, from various parts of the state. We have a dedicated link uh, for that, and you can find that from the main page at the Georgia State House and the Georgia State Senate websites. Our goal is to ensure that every comment that you want to make and every one that we receive goes into a central location so that we can utilize it in the drawing process that we're going to be going through. I want to again thank the members of that you see on the dais with us this, this afternoon. These are your public servants. These are House members and Senate members that have traveled from across the state to be here for one reason, and that is to listen 
to you and what you have to share. Um, finally, for my comments, uh, we're going to be making some changes in the process to ensure that we collect every piece of useful information about the process. Members of the General Assembly have received guidance from outside counsel about the importance of preserving records and information, and so that is foremost in our minds to make sure that we do just that. We've been making some adjustments along the way as Chair Rich and I receive information, be it from emails, voicemails, or other ways that you want to communicate with us. Uh, all of that is with the goal of ensuring that everyone's input in this process is received and collected. And with that, Chairman Rich. All right, thank you all so much for having us here today on your beautiful campus. This is my first time to, to get to visit here and it's so impressive and everyone has been so hospitable, so thank you all. I want to thank, of course, the members of the committee who are here. We also have members of our committee who are attending virtually via live stream since they were not able to actually make the trip to, to be here. Uh, we also have some of your local representatives here with us tonight. We have Representative Dominic Laricchia, who is here to listen to what you all have to say. We have Representative Al Williams, and of course, you, you heard from your representative here, Representative Don Hogan. We also have former State House Representative Ed Reinders with us. So once a public servant, always a public servant. Um, well, the million dollar question, the one that everybody wants to know the answer to is when will special session be? And at this point, we still don't know. The Census Bureau is saying that they will be releasing some preliminary data mid-August, but the final data that we need to draw the maps will not be released until September the 30th. There are still some lawsuits pending about this data, um, and we can't do very much until we actually get the data. So we have to start the process now with the time constraints that we have. Therefore, we are uh, receiving public commentary like we are here tonight. Um, we'll be hearing from people tonight live, and we also have heard from some people via Zoom virtually, and we'll be doing that again as well. In addition, we are collecting data, written data, from a central source on our legislative website. You should be able to go to the house.ga.gov or senate.ga.gov, and from that landing page, click the link there. We will likely be hearing from the public again after we receive some data. We just don't know yet exactly what that's going to look like. At some point after these public hearings, we as our individual committees will also have meetings to adopt guidelines and rules that will direct us in the, the legislative process for the special session. So for this hearing here tonight, we are going to first watch a short video that our media services department put together to educate everyone on some of the basics for redistricting. Then we will open it up to the individuals who have signed up to speak. We have the podium there in the center aisle uh, from which Representative Hogan spoke, which is where you will go to, to speak uh, into the microphone so that we can re uh, record this and also have it live streamed. Now, oftentimes when politicians hold hearings, it's to hear themselves talk. But that is not our purpose tonight. Our purpose tonight is to hear from you. We want to know about your community and what makes it unique. We want to hear about your, your issues and knowledge that you have as residents of your communities because you know it best. And it has been very enlightening as we've traveled around the state and heard from individuals about their community. So we, va we very much value what you have to tell us. So this is not a place for us to ask you questions or to answer questions. We want to devote all of the time that we have to hear what you have to say. Um, all of these recordings are, all of these he hearings are being recorded and live streamed. So if you want to go back and watch it again, it will be archived on our websites probably by tomorrow. Uh, and all of the ones that we've had prior to that have been as well. So with that, let's watch the video that Media Services has prepared. And if 
Nathan Russo could uh, be prepared to come speak at the conclusion of that video. Every 10 years following the decennial census, the process of redistricting begins all over our country. Let's take a look at what that redistricting is and what else we need to know before we begin this process in the state of Georgia. My name is Gina Wright and I'm the Executive Director of the Office of Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment. We are a nonpartisan joint office of the Georgia General Assembly and we serve both the House and the Senate. What is redistricting? As the population in our state grows, the number of people in each district must be adjusted so that the population in each district is as close to equal as practicable. This is done by redistricting or modifying the boundary lines of the districts. In Georgia, our new 2020 census resident population total is 10,711,908 people. Because of this population increase, each of our 14 congressional districts will need to adjust to have 765,136 people in them. At the state level, our legislative branch of government has 56 state senators and 180 representatives in the state house elected by districts. State Senate districts will be redrawn to now include around 191,284 people. State House districts will also need to increase in population size to around 59,511 people. In the Georgia General Assembly, there is a standing committee on redistricting in both the House and the Senate. Each committee has a chairman. Hi, I'm Bonnie Rich. I'm chairman of the Legislative and Congressional Reapportionment Committee in the State House. I've served in that capacity since 2019. Since 2018, I have represented District 97, which includes parts of Duluth, Suwannee, and Sugar Hill in Gwinnett County. Hello, I'm State Senator John F. Kennedy, and I represent the 18th District in the State Senate, which includes all of Monroe, Peach, Crawford, and Upson counties, and part of Bibb County and Houston County. I also am Chairman of the Senate Redistricting and Reapportionment Committee. What is reapportionment, and how is it different from redistricting? The term apportionment is the act of dividing and allocating representation proportionally. The United States Constitution requires that all 435 House districts shall be apportioned among the 50 states based on population from each decennial census. There is a guarantee of at least one seat per state in the United States House, and a method of equal proportions determines how the other 385 are distributed. Every 10 years, states may gain or lose congressional districts based on how they gained or lost population in comparison to other states based on data from the decennial census. The state of Georgia presently has 14 seats in the U.S. House and the 2010 census resulted in a gain of one new seat for the state following an increase of two new districts in 2000. It's common to interchange the term reapportionment with the term redistricting, but the two terms really don't mean the same thing. Reapportionment only occurs at the federal level when U.S. House districts are distributed amongst the states. Even with a gain of over a million people in Georgia over the past decade, Georgia will continue to have 14 congressional districts. When does redistricting take place? Traditionally, the governor of Georgia issues a call for a special legislative session in late summer or early fall following the arrival of the new census data. The sole purpose of this session is to adopt newly redrawn maps for all statewide district plans and may also include new maps for local county commission or school board districts. The session occurs so that all county election officials have sufficient time to update voter district assignments once the process is complete prior to elections the next year. After the Georgia General Assembly adopts new maps and the governor signs the bills into law, they become the new election districts for use in the next election cycle or on the date specified in the legislation. This year, with COVID-related delays in the census, the special session will likely take place later in the year because we will not receive full census data until late August or September. What other factors do we have to consider besides equal population? The first mission of redistricting is to ensure that districts are roughly equal to each other. Equalizing population ensures that each individual's vote counts the same toward their representatives. 
but equal population is only one part of the puzzle. Maps must also comply with the Voting Rights Act of 1965 and traditional principles of redistricting, like ensuring communities of interest are represented, avoiding major changes to existing representation in the legislature, and keeping local government jurisdictions whole. Those legal criteria are what often keeps maps from being drawn as perfect squares across our state. Why do we have public hearings? The redistricting process begins with hearing from the public. The General Assembly is ready to hear from you about the uniqueness of your part of the state, what communities of interest are here, and what important factors it should consider as we all prepare to redraw the districts later this year. All right, thank you so much. Um, uh, during the video, we have had a couple more of our legislators who have come to join us. Representative Stephen Gaines and Representative Stephen Meeks have also both joined us to hear from, from you and um, to witness what you have to say. Uh, we will now begin with our first speaker, who is Nathan Russo. After that will be uh, Cuffey Sullivan. And then after that will be Kimberly Polk. You may proceed. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nathan Russo, and I have lived on St. Simons Island, Glynn County, Georgia, for more than 30 years. I want to thank the Joint Restricting Redistricting Committee for coming to our community to listen to our opinions on drawing the redistricting voting maps. Our community has changed a lot over the last 30 years, and today is a mix of college-educated professionals skilled labor people from electricians, plumbers, carpenters, and HVAC experts. I would like the committee on drawing their redistricting lines to make sure that they keep our community a homogeneous entity as much as possible. Currently, one of our house districts extends uh, from northern St. Simons Island um, uh, in Glynn County through McIntosh County and even very rural Long County. Because Glynn and McIntosh are both coastal counties, I can understand some of the similarities of interest, but there is no reason to include rural Log County, but possibly replace the population in this county with more of St. Simon Island residents. The current map was drawn uh, based on gerrymandering, but in the future I would like to suggest that Georgia follow the Iowa State model that is described on the line on the website National Conference of State Legislators. The Iowa model uses bipartisan commission to establish voting district line as opposed to Republican or Democrat gerrymandering. I propose that your committee introduce an act to set up a, such a bipartisan committee along the lines of the Iowa model. I also suggest that once uh, these lines are drawn this year, you bring the finished product back to our community for more comments. We don't know how to talk about these lines because there are no lines right now. So we suggest that you come back for a second, uh, second time. Um, and I will say one more thing. Uh, by the way, um, Iowa is not alone in, in their process. Uh, the other states that have similar models are Arizona, California, Colorado, Iowa, India, in, I'm sorry, Idaho, Montana, Michigan, New Jersey, Virginia, and the state of Washington. Thank you for considering my suggestions. Thank, thank you, Mr. Russo. Next, we have Cuffy Sullivan, after that, Kimberly Polk, and then Sally Hardman. Senator Kennedy, Representative Rich, and committee members, thank you so much. My name is Cuffy Sullivan, formerly of Brunswick, Georgia. Now I reside in Savannah. I serve as Communications Committee Chair for Fair Districts Georgia, which is a nonpartisan nonprofit organization urging a fair and transparent redistricting process. Our three big asks are that you listen, show your work, and check your work. And today I'd like to focus a little bit on check your work. Thanks to an innovative partnership with the Princeton Gerrymandering Project, we've been able to generate hundreds of thousands of maps that all meet the three C's 
These are maps that are contiguous, respect county lines, and are VRA compliant. We are excited to make this analysis available to you and to citizens and community groups. This is the kind of data that was only previously available to legislative redistricting committees and not the general public. With this collection of half a million neutral computer generated maps, we are able to understand the characteristics of Georgia's natural demographics, political preferences, and minority representation. These unbiased maps give us an indication of the ranges we should expect so that we can evaluate proposed maps against those benchmarks. For example, if proposed maps are significantly different than what our non-biased computer-generated half a million maps predicted, then we might say that those proposed maps aren't responsive to voter preferences in that district and perhaps have been influenced by partisan or racial gerrymandering. We encourage you to take advantage of this resource. Today, I also sincerely ask that you release proposed maps in time for meaningful public review and feedback prior to adoption. Finally, we have recently released substantive analysis of what we're calling the Split Cities Project. Over 81% of Georgia's smaller cities have been cracked after the 2011 redistricting and subsequent mid-cycle redistricting. This means that a number of smaller Georgia cities who prior to 2010 were able to elect the candidate and representative of their choice now have their, com their community's cohesiveness split across numerous districts. Our website is fairdistricts.org. We are here to help and be a resource to you. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Ms. Sullivan. Next we have Kimberly Polk, then Sally Hardman, then Doug Harris. Hi, my name is Kimberly Polk, and I'm here on behalf of Step Up Savannah and the low to middle income residents of Chatham County. Step Up Savannah is a nonprofit established as a poverty reduction initiative and focuses on economic mobility and financial security as a direct service provider, advocate, convener, collaborator, and capacity builder to address the complicated issues around persistent poverty in the Savannah Chatham region. Poverty in Chatham County is multifaceted. Those in impoverished areas not only lack money to pay for and maintain assets, assets such as a stable home, reliable transportation, and education, but they also face limited access, information, and opportunities to resources that could assist them in getting ahead. These low wealth communities and communities of color are traditionally underrepresented and undercounted in the census. Therefore, they are not represented in mapping. It is incumbent on the state legislator to ensure that all Georgians receive the representation they deserve and should have. We would like the committee to ensure the redistricting process is fair and equitable for all low to middle income community citizens. By listening to the voices of all the community members, not only those represented in the census, we also request the redistricting process be made public so there is accountability and that the low to middle income voting strength is not unreasonably compromised. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Polk. Next we have Sally Hardman, then Doug Harris, and then Mike Schumanns. Hi, thank you for coming. Um, welcome to the Golden Isles, uh, Senator Kennedy and Representative Rich. We appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you. And I just want to talk a little bit about what Ms. Rich asked about what makes our area unique. And I would like to address, obviously, you've been here. You see our natural resources. Uh, maybe you had a chance to see the Golden Ray sitting out there, part of it still. So we have uh, some things that make us unique all along the coast. And I hope that we can stay cohesive and get our ideas represented, representatives to work together for our groups. Um, as the prior speaker said, with St. Simons, we need a cohesive group. I'm a realtor. I can tell you I see tons of people moving in, just pouring in. And I know Atlanta's the same way. They're just pouring in to come to retire here. I just this last week saw where Georgia has moved into number one for the 
place to retire and uh, deservedly so but we need to make sure that these areas along the coast that are so attractive to these people looking for places to retire that we have good representatives in the house and that we get our our voices heard thank you thank you thank you miss hardman next we have doug harris then mike schumann's and then after that demonish uh Anta Chinch. Some of this is the handwriting, not, not my inability, which I do have an inability to pronounce all names, but uh, all right. So, Mr. Harris, if you can proceed. <clears throat> Thank you. I appreciate the opportunity, Chair uh, Kennedy and Rich and uh, the full committee. I'm a county commissioner from Appling County. Appling County was formed in 1818 from uh, land ceded from the uh, Creek Indians and all or part of 14 present day counties came out as the county of Appling. It was the largest county east of the Mississippi at the time. Appling County has been diminished geographically over the years by the other counties being carved out of it. That same um, method has been, appears to be uh, utilized in the redistricting of 2010 part of Appling County, part of Jeff Davis County, and part of Wayne County, which are south of the Autumn Hall River, were added into District 156, which is north of the Autumn Hall River. Whenever we can utilize natural geographic boundaries to maintain, uh, as the video states, uh, maintain jurisdictions whole, uh, geographically as well as uh, in the, the other all, all arenas that are taken into to account we should maintain them as geographic complete entities rather than cutting them up Baxley Georgia which is the county seat of Appen County and Hazelhurst Georgia which is the county seat of Jeff Davis are both split where one side of the street is District 178, one, uh, one side of the street is, is 170, uh, 156. So, uh, you know, if, if I wanted to call my representative, I'd call Stephen Meeks. If my <clears throat> constituent across the street wanted to call theirs, they'd be calling Miss Lisa Hagen now, who is the newly elected representative. Uh, if we allowed ourselves to maintain the natural boundaries, there's several things could be accomplished by that. One is that we would represent the entities, as uh, she, the other young lady brought out a few minutes ago, uh, geographically as well as culturally within the different communities. We have a little bit different uh, viewpoints at, at different times. And Miss Hagen also, as part of her, part of her uh, advertising campaign, ensured that uh, it was known that people on the other side of the river needed a representative. Well, that's true of both banks of the Autumn Hall. Uh, uh, we need to have our uh, voices heard as well. And uh, the other thing is that the Georgia Senate and congressional, the uh, national congressional districts are inclusive, it appears, of total geographic entities like complete counties and the counties are not uh, not cut up. My particular district in in uh, Appling County has a couple of appears to be gerrymandered geographical locations because you come down a, a road, be coming down a highway, and there's this little cutout down below it that makes absolutely no sense. It would be easier for us to uh, campaign as well as <laughs> other people if you knew where you're uh, geographic demarcation lines are and their their follow natural boundaries it would just seem to be uh, to be better so I, I implore you to uh, do the best that we can to maintain the natural geographic boundaries as well as include Appling County either in one district or the other district as well as Wayne and, and Jeff Davis such that we uh, would have be a uh, maintain a cohesive district within our uh, within our geographical boundaries. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Schumann. Oh, Mr. Harris. 
Next up is um, Chairman Schumann's, Mike Schumann's. After that will be Diminish Antitench and then Christina Magera. My name is Mike Schumann's. I'm from Baxley, Georgia, Appling County. I'm here to, uh, the first off, let me say thank y'all for hearing us today. Uh, I know y'all have quite a job ahead of you. Uh, it's a non-appreciative job. It don't matter which way you go with it. You're not going to satisfy everybody. So I can, I can understand what you're trying to do and wish you the best of luck. But the county that I represent, Appling County, as chairman, we have two representatives. The only thing that we would like to ask for if during the redistricting, if possible, we would like to have one representative for Appling County. And I know you're hearing that all over the state, but that's just my request. And the people of Appling County is if any way possible, we would like to be represented by one representative. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman Schumann. Next and then Christina Magara, and then Divine McGrath. Good evening, chairs, members of the committee. Um, first, I'll apologize for my handwriting. It is admittedly <laughs> awful, and that was me trying to write neat. <laughs> uh, my name is Jamana Shantena, and I live and work in Georgia. I'm a redistricting coordinator for Fair Count, a nonpartisan nonprofit focused on equity, access, and participation in our democracy. I have several concerns and questions about the transparency of this process that I would like the com committee to consider. As we near the end of these public hearing series, I am concerned that this will be the extent of the committee's attempts at taking public input on how our communities will be governed for the next decade. Will there be more opportunities for public input, particularly ma when district maps are being drafted and available for view? On that note, when can we expect district maps to be drawn and voted on? Will there be a special session this fall, or should we expect the process to happen during the 2022 session? Will the committee ensure enough time for thorough public input when they are in session? And how will the committee in incorporate public input into district maps? Finally, will, this, will the hearing that was postponed in Augusta be rescheduled, and if so, when? Redistricting will affect all of us for the next decade. It will determine everything from the weight our votes carry to if our schools are overcrowded and underfunded. I ask that the committee commit to a transparent process since the consequences of an unfair redistricting process will gravely impact every aspect of our lives for the next 10 years. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next we have Christina Magera, then Divine McGrath, and then Daniela Rodriguez. Members of the Reapportionment uh, Committee, thank you for being here today and thank you for your time. My name is Christina Magana and I am the daughter of migrant farm workers. I am a citizen of Savannah, Georgia and a member of Migrant Equity Southeast. Migrant Equity Southeast is an organization that advocates for the rights of immigrant communities in coastal Georgia. As the Community Outreach Coordinator for Migrant Equity Southeast, I have seen firsthand the inequity and a lack of access to equitable resources for the immigrant community. From going back and forth with the health department to ensure that immigrant neighborhoods have access to clean drinking water and proper plumbing, helping immigrant parents navigate educational resources for distance learning during COVID and witnessing the institutional barriers when immigrant families attempt to access medical and community resources no one should deal with a lack of the most basic resources simply because of language barrier. The immigrant communities of South Georgia have contributed to much of the success and growth of Georgia, yet their voices have been long excluded from our political system. In order for the immigrant community to advocate for structural change, we need to have voting districts that are fairly drawn. As you engage in the redistricting process, we ask that there be transparency and an opportunity for public input, as well as adequate time to ensure that there's enough um, time for the community to give public comment. Um, we thank you for your time. Um, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Magania. Uh, Divine, is it Divine? Oh, it's uh, Devin. Devin, Devin McGrath, and then we have Daniela Rag Riguez, and then Jay Jones. Thank you to the reapportionment committee 
for your time. My name is Devin McGrath. I'm a resident of Savannah, Georgia, and I'm speaking behalf as part of Migrant Equity Southeast, as along with Christina, as well as part of a generation of Georgians who are now growing up and becoming adults and understand the impact that the decisions made by this committee will have on our future. Children across our states whose futures have and will be irrevocably affected by disinterested and politically motivated decisions of state legislators to underfund education, physical and mental health care, housing and the other most basic needs of our community, while grossly overfunding the criminalization, surveillance and over-policing of our communities. Georgia has one of the largest carceral systems in the world. Allowing private bondsmen, weapons and surveillance manufacturers, and a plethora of other corporate interests to extract exorbitant profits from the suffering of our communities. As demonstrated by HB 286, our state legislature will enshrine over-policing by preventing even a 5% decrease in police budgets. Imagine if we allocated resources so that we could truly make our communities safe and thrive. Ensuring universal housing, health care, and university education for Georgians regardless of class, race, and state-imposed citizenship status. Instead of all the resources we spend to criminalize and extract wealth and labor from our communities. We only need to look back 50, 60, 70 years to look at the county unit system, which overprivileged and overrepresented certain communities while underrepresenting by extreme amounts other communities until it was struck down in the 60s by the Supreme Court. While the structural issues that have long plagued our communities will not be solved by even the fairest reapportionment process performed by an independent commission that seeks to maximize the political representation of communities who have for centuries been excluded from political power. If the Georgia State Legislature fails to do so, it will stand as a testament to the anti-democratic, extractive, and exclusionary design at the core of our economic and political systems. Our communities are resilient and we will continue to organize for the change and a better future. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Ms. Daniela Rodriguez, followed by Jay Jones, and then Haley Watkins. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for, this, for allowing me the opportunity to speak today. My name is Daniela Rodriguez. I'm the Executive Director of Migrant Equity Southeast, which is a nonprofit organization that advocates for the rights of immigrants in South Georgia. I'm a resident of Savannah, Georgia, but Brunswick is a special place for me because this is where my family lives, and this is a place where I went to middle school and high school. Today, I would like to talk about my community, the immigrant community of Glynn and Chatham County. I love Brunswick but I don't think Brunswick loves me back. I grew up in a neighborhood that didn't have street lights and that every time that it rained, it was impossible to walk because the streets were flooded. I remember telling my mother that it wasn't fair. Even though we were poor, we deserved better, condition, better living conditions. My mother replied, lo siento hija, I'm sorry daughter, this is how it is for us because we're not white and we don't live in St. Simon's Island. I also remember my mother struggling to get to work because she didn't have a car, and because unfortunately, Brunswick, Brunswick doesn't have public transportation. Access to public transportation and better living conditions should not be a luxury for communities of color in Brunswick or in Savannah. And while I didn't know better as a child, I know better as an, as an adult, and this is why I'm back it doesn't have to be like this. We can do something about it. We need better representation. We need representation that cares. We need radical transformations of our electoral system that, that centers communities of colors and immigrants. Our voting power should not be diluted. I want you to take into consideration the lack of resources that we currently have. Brunswick is very diverse, and its diversity should, not be, should be seen as something beautiful, not as a threat. 
as you engage in the redistricting process, I hope my story serves as a reminder that immigrants have a voice. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Rodriguez. Next up, we have Jay Jones, followed by Haley Watkins, and then Laura Angelich. Thank y'all for coming down here to South Georgia. It's very important that y'all take the time to spend time with us here. A lot of times I talk about how we're always forgotten about in South Georgia, and for y'all to be here, it means a lot. Um, I am here, I sit in many different roles, many different shoes, um, but the most important shoes that I sit in at this time, at this moment, is an eight-year-old who will be 19 years old when y'all come before us again, and that's my son, Johannes Jones. Why that's important is because the lines we draw affect him more than it affects me, because I know how to adapt, I know how to change, but these lines will ultimately affect how we build schools. It will ultimately affect how government works. It will ultimately, it will ultimately affect how we do things moving forward. And so it's so important that we draw the lines that be equitable and fair in our communities because I want him to be able to play and be with those people he needs to be with. And it shouldn't be gerrymandered or changed or reapportioned in any other, port or any other matter to make sure that we're having those fair conversations and those fair playgrounds and those fair environments for us to play at. And so I say it again, I come here for my son. I don't come here as any of those titles I represent because my son is the most important thing in my life and I hope and I've already heard how fair and transparent we should be but making sure that we leave a future for our kids is way way more important and so I'll leave it at that once again I appreciate y'all for coming down here to take the time to be with us in South Georgia God bless thank you Mr. Jones next up Holly Haley Watkins then Laura Angelich and then Taylor Ritz Good evening. My name is Haley Watkins, and I'm a longtime resident of coastal Georgia. I grew up in this area, and I'm here to testify that all Georgians deserve a redistricting process that inspires trust and confidence. A fair and transparent process for drawing district lines is critical to the democratic process and affects every political issue, from the economy to public transportation, public education, health care, environmental protections, voter access, and more. I am proud to be from this community and believe in our ability to fight for positive change. As a local educator and environmentalist, I spend each and every day instilling the message that small change can make a big difference and that we have the ability to make our voices heard. Today, I ask that we assure, today I ask that we assure a future in which all of those voices can be heard. In the past, Georgia's redistricting process has taken place behind closed doors with minimal public participation and minimal accountability. The lack of laws guiding the redistricting plans and process has allowed for representatives to choose their constituents for partisan gain. We live in a nation where citizens should choose their representatives, not the other way around. On behalf of my community, I ask that the leaders in the redistricting process release all proposed district maps for public review, along with a list of the factors that were taken into account when developing such plans. Legislators should also release an analysis of how such plans will impact the ability of minority groups to elect candidates of their choice. What will the next 10 years look like for Georgia? And what can we do today to assure that future generations can make their voices heard? It is our decision, and this is our moment. We must not succumb to corrupt and partisan drawing of district lines, but instead must choose a brighter future for Georgia and a brighter future, future for this community. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Watkins. Next up, Laura Angelich, followed by Taylor Ritz, and then Saida Barrow. Thank you to the committee for being here today. My name is Laura Angelic. I grew up on St. Simons Island. My family, friends, and I are active members of this community. Since graduating from high school here, I've earned my degree in mathematics from Georgetown University and my degree in education from Harvard Graduate School of Education. I'm a public school math and STEM educator, and I teach my students that they can make a difference 
just as every educator I've had in Glen County taught me. When my teachers at Oglethorpe Point, a Glen County public school, taught me and my classmates this, there were no qualifiers, no magical string being pulled for those already in power to gerrymander their way to more power. I believe in our community, and I hope to raise my future children in a place where they will grow up to have their voices heard. I'm looking forward to the day that we in Georgia are the example for how to move to a more equitable redistricting process. I know that once we have an independent redistricting process, not one subject to the yearly decisions of partisan elected officials, we as a community have the power to show the next generation what our patriotism in harmony with our diversity looks like in action. Now is the decision point for Georgia. What are we gonna do with our next 10 years? Will we be left behind? Or are we in Georgia the example for democracy through nonpartisan redistricting in our nation? Thank you to the committee. Thank you, Ms. Angelic. Next up is Taylor Ritz, followed by Sylvia Barrio and then Vianti Joseph. Thank you. My name is uh, Taylor Ritz. I grew up here in Glen County. Um, I'm a member of the local nonprofit A Better Glen, which is an equity initiative. I'm also the executive member, an executive member of the Glen County Democratic Committee. Now, mm -hmm. did y'all hear that? Did you hear how the room tensed up a little bit on that last part? Half the people in this room have very little interest in what I have to say now. Your job is to create districts in Georgia, and I know it isn't an easy one. I understand that y'all put yourselves out there, probably get yelled at a lot. People can tell you they want fair districts, but no matter what you do, someone will call it unfair because we probably all have different ideas of what fair looks like. However, from my perspective, and this is a very uneducated one in making districts because that's not one of my jobs, um, I look at St. Simons Island, which is a 16 square mile island, and it's split into two different state house districts. Just looking at the video that y'all played before we spoke, um, Representative Rich, your own district is an S shape. Now, again, this isn't my forte. There may be very good reasons for those things that I don't know, but from our perspective, it doesn't look like it should look that way. But this community isn't a large one. Of the 10.7 million people in Georgia, we're about 85,000 strong in Glen County. On the topics of great seafood and the Georgia Bulldogs, most of us can agree. However, this small community is ravaged by bipartisanship. People say and do the most horrendous things to one another in the name of political parties here. We are tiptoeing around this room trying to judge which people are on our side and which ones we should avoid. I'm sure this is a thankless job. I imagine very few people are calling you up and telling you how much they admire these new district lines. I don't sit in meetings that y'all attend in this process and I'm not an expert on drawing districts. What I'm asking is that you do what you think is best for our people, but remove politics from the equation. Thank you for holding these meetings and at least listening to what we have to say. Whether we voted for you or not, you are our leaders. Ending the intense, ugly bipartisanship in my community doesn't start with all of us, it starts with you. Thank you. Thank you. Next is uh, Saida Bono. And if I could, before we uh, give you the mic, uh, I neglected to acknowledge and recognize Macy McFall is here. She was here a little earlier. She may have stepped out of the room for a moment, but she is with Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan's office and she's with us this evening also. Ma'am, you have the mic, thank you. Thank you, and yes, my name is Saida Bano. Thank you so much. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Saida. I come from a family of Pakistani immigrants. I grew up between Gwinnett and Forsyth counties, both places where vibrant immigrant communities exist and continue to exist. And I'm a community organizer with the Asian American Advocacy Fund. The Asian American Advocacy Fund is a nonprofit organization that advocates for federal, state, and local policies that will improve the lives of Asian, Amer Asian Americans Pacific Islanders, and other immigrant communities in Georgia. So I wanna start by thanking the chairs and the members of this committee for having this public forum. While working as a community organizer with the South Asian community during the 2020 election cycle, I held conversations with hundreds of community members. 
whether it was through the in-language hotlines we had, virtual question forums, or in person at small businesses and places of worship. There's one anecdote that stands out to me the most from all the conversations I had. There was an elderly South Asian man who called on the last Thursday of early voting, letting me know that his absentee ballot status st uh, stated rejected. He said that he planned on going to vote in person the next day, um, which was the last day of early voting. I told him make sure he brought his ID, let him know that it wasn't that bad of a process and just mask up, it's fine. Um, he called again late Friday morning saying that he went to the polling precinct that was the closest to him, but it tur was turned away because it wasn't in his county. He was really confused because it was literally the closest one to him. So after a little bit of research, we realized that the one that was only 10 minutes away from him was actually not in his county, so he couldn't vote there. We did some research really quickly and was he was able to go to one in Forsyth County where he was able to vote and everything worked out. After the, um, but he, it was really hard to explain to him why it didn't work out because how do you tell a really, like just a really nice dude who's in his late 60s who wants to vote because he knows how important it is, but it's the middle of a pandemic, he doesn't want to risk his life and his ballot was rejected and it was because the place, the place he's trying to go doesn't work out. So I thought of a personal anecdote that I had um, to try to offer him, him some solace, which I don't know if it did. But while I was in high school, I remember being able to hear the class change bells for the, uh, from my backyard of Lambert High School, the county's newest high school of the time, while, dr while I was driving 17 minutes to get to South Forsyth High School. I remember doing the math. If I leave my house at 8.02, I can still be there by 8.19 and have a minute before the bell rings. It was like a really big science in my head. Um, and so I thought about that all the time. But then when I was in middle school, when we were finishing middle school, uh, half of my friends group went to South Forsyth High School, the other half went to Central Forsyth, while I could still hear the bells of Lambert High School from my backyard. Of course, as a terrified high school freshman, this was just me wanting to like really be with my friends because I didn't know anyone else. But as someone who's working in the advocacy space now, I know it's more so about keeping communities together. I know that this, while I know this community, uh, committee will be responsible for drawing district lines for congressional and state legislative districts, you all will set the stage for redistricting for local governments and school boards. So I ask that you take our communities into consideration and lead by example for other redistricting, redistricting processes to follow. We ask that you prioritize keeping our communities together as you move along in the redistricting process. No community deserves to be underrepresented because of unfair, unjust, and unrepresentative redistricting, especially when that comes with overrepresentation of other communities. The, these town halls are places for you all to ensure that all community members are heard and our interest, interests are represented in this process so our communities can thrive, not to protect political interests and ensure political gain. We were always taught in school that our government is a representative democracy. So I ask that you ensure that the redistricting process will allow for all of us to feel that we are equal participants of a representative democracy. Thank you. Thank you. Vianti Joseph, please. This will be followed by Vasu Abarani. My name is Vianti Joseph, and I am the organizing director of the Asian American Advocacy Fund, an organization that is dedicated to building a politically conscious, engaged, and progressive Asian American base in Georgia. But more importantly, I am a Georgia resident for over 30 years. I have, which is obviously most of my life. Um, I've gone to school here. I have worked here. I am raising a family here in Georgia. Um, and thank you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity as a Georgian to lend my voice to this process. Now, you didn't come to the 6th District where I am. So I came hundreds of miles to you because this is my home. Georgia is my home. It is my family's home, and I am here today because I care about what happens in my home. Like you, um, I have listened to every single testimony of every single town hall so far, glued to my laptop for hours, and I have noticed many similarities in the requests. I don't have any new requests, but I have decided that watching others testify was not enough. I understand that you're doing a difficult job and you've said that you will not answer any questions and I totally understand the need 
to receive complete information before making any decisions. But I, I wonder, when will you respond to all these statements that are being made across Georgia? When and how will you address the request, the numerous requests for a fair and a transparent process? When will you address the request for community inputs into the redistricting process? When will you respond to the asks for the timeline and the process? I hear that you don't know when the special session will be, and we don't know when, but do we know how? Can we at least be told how these new maps will be drawn? What is this process going to be? It is incredibly important to ensure that these voices of Georgia voters are not, who are showing up all over, that we're not drowned out by political expediency. We encourage you, the members of the reapportionment committee, in good faith to collaborate with and engage with the community members, organization, and others around the state to ensure that the process is fair and representative of a democratic process that is rooted in community representation. We don't just want redistricting. We want fair districting. Our organization and lots of others who have testified are ready and waiting for information on how we can get our communities involved. Voters across Georgia need to be fully informed and understand how they can fully part and effectively participate beyond public testimony. How do we move from this public testimony to actively participating in where our lines will be drawn? We need to know that our input will be accepted and considered when drawing these lines. I ask you to please make this a people-powered process that doesn't just end with public testimony. Black and brown households across Georgia are usually in our, the ones that are most impacted that have been by redistricting and should not be left out of these conversations. These are important voices and our communities are the ones on the line. These are our communities and it should be our lines. Thank you. Thank you. Basu? Well, I'm gonna let you pronounce your last name, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll do that. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair Kennedy, Chair Rich, and esteemed members of the Joint Committee. Uh, my name is Vasu Abiraman. I am the Senior Policy Counsel at the ACLU of Georgia. Um, I'm also a proud Georgia native born, raised, and schooled all the way through in the great state of Georgia, both a Tech and UGA grad. Um, I am a proud Georgia native, but there are a few things in this state I am not so proud of. I'm, I'm not so proud of the fact that we have seen eight rural hospitals close over the past decade. Uh, in this coastal area, we have many Georgia residents who live over half an hour drive from the closest hospital. Um, I'm not so proud of that fact, especially given that Georgia is a consistent leader in this nation when it comes to maternal mortality, uh, usually number one or two in the nation. And an outlier within that outlier is black maternal mortality. Uh, I'm not so proud of the fact that if you look up the top 50 counties in terms of the poorest counties in this nation, you will see Georgia counties all over that list, whether it's by per capita income or median household income. Um, and I'm not so proud of the fact that uh, two men last year thought they could murder Ahmaud Arbery in cold blood and get away with it with the backing of the law behind them. These represent downstream effects of a process that does not yet empower voters of color and black voters the way it should. So we call on this committee to be genuinely transparent after the data comes out while the maps are being drafted and after proposed maps are created to solicit meaningful public input along all of these lines and to understand that the face of Georgia is changing. In fact, if you look at Glenn McIntosh and, and Brantley counties, uh, you'll see that uh, the white and Hispanic population, this is preliminary data from the American Community Survey, uh, 
the, the white voting age population and the Hispanic voting age population has gone up by 6%, while the black voting age population has gone up by 12%, and the Asian voting age population has gone up by 75%. Uh, we also know that these population changes in Georgia have not been evenly distributed, so the question is not if the maps are going to change, the question is how the maps are going to change. And we ask that they're changed fairly, because too many voters here in Georgia have been redlined, packed, and cracked into disenfranchisement and poverty and even death. Fair maps is what legislating on the side of life is really all about. Thank you. Thank you. Alicia Stallworth next to be followed by Edna Jackson. And while Ms. Stallworth makes uh, her way down, I understand that Savannah Mayor Van Johnson is with us and former Mayor Edna Jackson is also here. So welcome to you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Alicia Stallworth. I'm here representing Planned Parenthood Southeast Advocates. Thank you all for being here today. Um, I really appreciate you all taking the time out to be here. So I would like to commend the reapportionment and redistricting committee for coming to Brunswick to ensure that all Georgians have the opportunity to have their voices heard, even those located outside of the bigger metropolitan areas. However, within that same vein, we have to ensure that those within some of our most populous areas also have the opportunity to participate in the voting process. Without access to voting, our ability to advocate for reproductive rights and access to health care is jeopardized, which is why Planned Parenthood Southeast Advocates is advocating for a fair and transparent process. We represent over 260,000 members in Georgia, with over 20,000 members residing in coastal Georgia. We encourage the committee to schedule public input hearings after census data has been released so that current demographics can be taken into account. Public hearings should allow for the discussion and submission of communities of interest data by Georgians. Hearings to consider redistricting bills must allow for virtual and remote participation, including citizen testimony via video conference so that citizens from across the state have ample opportunity to participate. Our state is at a crossroads, a time and place where we can truly enact change. In 2020, Georgia set records for voter turnout and election participation despite the coronavirus pandemic. The people of our state have fought hard to make their voices heard and engage in the civic process that is at the core of the ideals that we preach as civil servants. Georgians do not deserve maps that are drawn to manipulate the party lines in our legislature or have their community split on the basis of a power structure or incumbency. We deserve and we demand fair districts that are drawn with ethical consideration of community and representation. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Edna Jackson, please, followed by Nina Altschiller. Good afternoon. I am Edna Branch Jackson, former mayor of the great city of Savannah, Georgia. Let me thank you for having this program here today to listen to what the people have to say. Now, I have been a resident of the city of Savannah for 76 years. So I think I know something about the community and about Chatham County. There are some things that, are, that I see here. When you talk about reapproachment, that is not to me in favor of the people. Years ago, we used to sit around tables along with our legislators to help draw the lines so that the residents of the community could have an input and so that it was fair to the people. Equity is so important today in what we have to do, and we don't want to see any gerrymandering of what have you in order to bring forth more uh, residents in one area than in others that may be partisan uh, by a partisan division. We don't need that. But the one thing that I'm very concerned about, and my mayor said, now be nice, so I'm being nice, <laughs> is that Savannah, when I looked at your map, on this paper, there is one little dot down in the southern part of the state of Georgia. We want to know why can't we have a session in the city of Savannah and Chatham County? 
because we're the ones that are within the drawing district, uh, district that we need. Remember, Savannah is the first city of Georgia. And we, do feel, we feel that we are not getting an opportunity to express what we are really interested in. Yes, we came down to Brunswick, a beautiful city, but Savannah surrounds itself with Chatham County, Effingham County, many, many, many areas. So we're asking you, if you will rethink your schedule and at least have a committee, have a committee to come down and talk to the residents of Savannah this represents to us that, well, to me, because I am speaking as an individual, but it represents a way of disenfranchising people, and that is what we do not need to happen in the community. Thank you for affording me the opportunity. I'm sure that I'm going to cut myself short so that the mayor can talk to you about the things that are happening in our community. But think first before you end the schedule of coming to the hostess city of the South and talking with the residents, the business community, the, the religious community. I left a, a program today made up of members of the, in it, of the AME church. They are concerned about it. And there are many, many groups as to why Brunswick was selected and not Chatham County being selected. Please rethink what you're doing rethink your schedule, but please rethink about the people, not about how your lines will be drawn, but about the people and the kind of services that they need in their community. Again, thank you very much. I didn't come with any paper. I wanted to come from the heart because I know it is about the people. Hopefully you will remember that also. Thank you very much. Thank you. Nina Altschuler, and followed by Julie Jordan. Good evening. Uh, I'm Nina Altschuler. I'm president of the League of Women Voters of Coastal Georgia, and I thank you for holding this hearing. I agree with Mayor Jackson. It would be nice to have one in Savannah as well. I came down from Savannah today, though we do represent the whole coast of Georgia. Um, we hope you will return to share the redistricting maps once you have drawn the lines. I, I want to reiterate that. We hope you will return once the redistricting maps are drawn and maybe Savannah could be considered as part of that conversation. The League believes strongly that partisan politics shouldn't determine voting access or districts. According to Ballotopia, 76% of local races and 51% of state legislative races were uncontested in 2020. This impacts, voting, um, uh, this impacts voting. Elections with no opposition have 12% fewer participants. Clearly, this is not a reflection of voters' preferences, but a manipulated outcome that runs counter to the constitutional mandate for democratic elections. Potential candidates know that they can't win in a gerrymandered district. The League encourages every citizen to follow this process closely and demand that the public be involved at every step, including reviewing the draft maps. It seems to us that the Princeton model would afford you a nonpartisan means of redrawing those maps. There are many ways to deprive citizens of their right to vote. Of them, gerrymandering is the most insidious and has the most damaging effects. Thank you again for having this hearing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> Julie Jordan, please, followed by Zach Lyde. Thank you for committee for holding this uh, hearing in Brunswick, Georgia. We really appreciate it. Um, we've got a, a beautiful county, as you guys know, and we just want to make sure that every member of our community's um, voice is heard in the elections. So my name is Julie Jordan. I've lived in Glenn County for over 23 years. I've been a school teacher and administrator in our school system here for over 20 years. And I'd like to think I know a little bit about the community, especially in Brunswick um, and what their needs are. I don't mean to speak on behalf of them, but I, I've seen so many students um, that are in poverty here in Brunswick. You know, we have St. Simons, we have Jekyll, we have Sea Island, and we have a lot of wealth there. 
you cross over the causeway into Brunswick and we have over 30% poverty rate. Parts of Brunswick, 76% poverty rate. But they really don't have any representation. We have one Glen County commissioner that comes out of District 5, which is in Brunswick. 60% minority in Brunswick. We have one African American commissioner. We have one school board member who's a Democrat, an African American woman who comes out of District 5. We have no other representation in, this, in, this, in the entire county for um, our, our citizens of Brunswick and people that happen to not be Republican. Now, I am the chair of the Democratic Party here, but I believe that redistricting should be nonpartisan. I think it should be fair and that everyone should have a fair chance of being represented by who believes in, in um, your same beliefs and, and what you hold dear, that we should all be able to have opportunities and health care and that. So I'm asking, even as a Democrat, I'm asking for fair and transparent redistricting. In, um, on St. Simons Island, we have District 179 and we have District House District 167. District 167 is a little rectangle, rectangle of St. Simons. It goes from Sea Island Road all the way to the left side of St. Simons to the um, far end of the island. That's it. That allows double representation for basically St. Simons Island. And it neglects representation for the city of Brunswick and the rest of our county. So I thank you for having this hearing, but I urge you to have transparent process and fair redistricting that's nonpartisan. Thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Jack Lyde, please, followed by Brett Holm. Good evening. My name is Reverend Zach Lyde, and uh, I'm a little nervous because my wife is behind me. <laughs> <laughs> and she gave me instructions that I was not supposed to dominate this hearing. <laughs> so y'all arranged for it a minister, a preacher, to have four lousy min minutes. That meant that you didn't want to hear from me. I have a shirt on that represents Vietnam veterans. <laughs> now you done made me mad. <laughs> the reason that I'm representing the Vietnam veterans in the term, in the issue of Marshes of Glen GI Club is the very reason that one person on the back of this shirt that was killed in Vietnam was left off of this shirt. His name is not on here, which means that gerrymandering has been the same practice of leaving folk like me out of the discussion. If I had been in the discussion, I would have said to Representative Rich, I know why your district is an S district, because it stands for slaves. You can ooh if you want to, but the reason that we are in the condition that we are in now is because we have not been truthful about none of this. And tonight, I don't expect fairness. It's the young folk that expect, expect fairness. It's my grandchildren that expect fairness. They won't get it because you're going to leave them out. I have not seen one Republican stand up to this podium tonight because I know what they know. Mr. 
Mr. Brett Holm. Followed by Mary Beckman, please. Good evening. I'm Brett Hume. Uh, appreciate y'all coming down on the coast. Hopefully you have the opportunity to get some great Georgia white shrimp. Uh, I represent the Southeastern Carpenters Regional Council, 2,600 members throughout Georgia. I'm joined by the president of the Savannah Regional Central Labor Council, representing over 8,000 members in Southeast Georgia. All we're asking is for some fairness and equity in the process. You know, historically, this comes down every 10 years by the party in charge attempt to, re to keep power at the end of the day, regardless of party, because both are guilty, all right? And minimize the other party's impact. I get it. I understand it. I'm asking for you to address this process with some common sense and fair play. Maybe break that cycle. And here's my logic. If Georgia, not if, now that Georgia, I believe is seventh year in a row, number one state to do business, that suggests that competition is good. If more businesses are coming, why can't we have the competition in the political arena? Historically, like I said, using the old process, we've got districts that elected officials run unopposed, consistently. How is that healthy? Competition is healthy. Or we, I suggest we wouldn't be the seventh year running number one place to do business. What that will entail is elected officials being accountable to the entire constituency they represent, not just the majority percentage that elected them. But it also suggests accountability. Because if your voting record is positive enough to the majority of constituents, you'll get reelected, regardless of party. Because that's really all you have to go on. You can glad hand and, and treat people nice to their face, but when you get up to the gold dome, some of the decisions you make are contradictory to the district. And the majority of working people are busy working. And they don't find out until the effects directly hit them between the eyes. I would suggest the second speaker's suggestion about using a template to begin with, the computerized versions of what a fair district would look like. And I understand there's tweaks and adjustments. I get it. But at the end of the day, if you do a good job and do a right job as an elected official, you'll get reelected. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Mary Beckman, followed by Max Hess, please. I would appreciate it. And thank you, thank you so much, committee and uh, chairs, for coming down here. Uh, we're often neglected down here in the south of Georgia, and I can tell you that as someone who lives in the southernmost part. The, uh, I'm, my name's Mary Beckman, and my husband and I have owned a house in Camden County since 1998. Although I'm not from this part of the world, as you can probably tell from my accent, uh, I've put down roots here, and this is now my community. Now, Camden is one of the original counties of Georgia. So it's bordered, as you can see on your, it's the right panel on the first page of your handout. It's bordered by the Atlantic Ocean on the east, St. Mary's to the south, Glynn County here to the north, and to our west, Charlton County, which used to be many years ago part of Camden County. A good number of my friends 
uh, in uh, Camden County are from families that have lived in Camden County for many generations. So I'm going back to the 1700s where they were kidnapped uh, and brought here from the rice coast of Africa to work in the uh, rice uh, plantations and so on. These were the people who worked together in the Gilman paper mill or the Sayoko chemical plant and who peacefully integrated the county schools in 1971. Today, the Kings Bay sub-base is the largest employer in Camden County, and because of that, we're, our community is a vibrant mix of people from everywhere, and we're still one of the most integrated uh, counties in this part of Georgia. Our population is about 20% African American, 70% white, with the other 10 being 10% 10 being uh, mixed race, Hispanic, or Asian American. And our schools, this is important, our schools, all of them, show that same mix. We're an integrated county. Our three cities, Kingsland and St. Mary's in the southern part of the county, Woodbine in the center, also are integrated. We have at least two African Americans in each of the three city councils. Uh, the rural northern communities of Waverly and, uh, and uh, Tarboro also are integrated. Many of the families there have owned that land since, the re since Reconstruction. Now, the first page of your handout shows the maps before the 2010 census. And you can see, at that point, there were only two districts in the southern uh, corner uh, east of the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, Camden was all in District 180. Charlton and Ware together were in District 177. So just two districts west of the, uh, east of the swamp. Now the second page of your handout, if you turn to that, that shows the maps after the 2010 census. You can see what's happened to Camden County. It's been split into two districts. District 180 now uh, has grown this pseudopod over the top half of Charlton and the middle third of Ware to cut off a corner, a third of White Cross. Uh, the southeastern corner of Camden now is uh, in District 174, which used to be just underneath Valdosta. That district has now stretched all the way over and cut off the southwest corner of Kingsland. The representative in District 174, he lives way over uh, in, in a little, uh, little town on the uh, outskirts of Valdosta. The last time I, we saw him in Camden County was four years ago. The last page of your handout shows what the Kingsland City website says is about our representatives. They only list Representative Sains, District 180, even though uh, John Corbett's district starts right across the hall, uh, road from uh, City Hall. My ask to you is that you please put us back together. Uh, make Camden County just one district. Don't split Charlton into two districts. And please, please, do not crack Waycross, which is 55% African American, into three different districts. I thank you for your time. Thank you, ma'am. Max Hess, please. My name is Max Hess. I'm here on behalf of Fellowship of Reconciliation with a residential address in City of Brunswick, Glynn County, Georgia. I'm here to advocate on behalf of a community of interest coming out of the killing of Ahmad Arbery that is common to Glynn County and their Brunswick and Waycross judicial circuits. Following the killing of Mr. Arbery, we learned some new things. I'm going to highlight four. We learned that when a call came in to law enforcement, the caller would sometimes be referred to a private citizen's patrol group. 
including the McMichaels. We learned that a private patrol group might be using a government-issued weapon, as was Mr. McMichael. We learned that law enforcement has a policy and procedure for taking custody of an arrested person from a private patrol group. They call it private arrest in their procedure. We learned that if a purportedly arrested person was killed in the process, our prosecutors would declare it to have been a justifiable homicide relying in part upon citizen's arrest. Thanks to the efforts begun by Representative Carl Gilliard and all of you in the legislature, we have now abolished citizen's arrest going forward. But there is unfinished business. We need to find out, for instance, how many citizen patrols are still operating in our community. We need to find out whether law enforcement is still referring callers to the private patrols. We need to find out if the private patrols are still using government-issued weapons. The promised investigations these were promised by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation and the U.S. Justice Department in May of 2020 have gone nowhere as far as we can tell. So I'm urging that we need to draw our district lines to recognize a community of interest in having representation that is interested in demanding investigation, reform, and accountability in these matters. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, William Ligon, Sr., please. Followed by Patrick Duncan. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Pastor Ligon has uh, departed I believe so I'm Patrick Duncan um, thank you all for coming I want to thank the committee for choosing Glen County rather than our first district cousin to the north uh, county cousin to the north it's good to have uh, the committee here uh, as part of this process um, I'm a lifelong resident of Glen County except for uh, college and a career in fact, two years spent on this campus. I'm speaking today uh, representing the GOP County uh, Committee. I'm the local chair. Uh, firstly, um, we appreciate all of the outreach uh, that this committee uh, is going through. Um, we're, we appreciate uh, the transparency, uh, the information sharing, and what we've learned uh, thus far. Um, many of the uh, messages uh, that you get on a daily basis might be a little complex. Uh, we have a simple one. We like to preserve our district uh, boundaries as currently drawn. They serve us well. We're, we're proud of the uh, folks we've elected, and they've done a great job. Mathematically, uh, our county has 85,000 population. Mathematically, we're gonna be one plus district no matter how you do it, okay? And that's currently what we have. We currently have one district and then we have part of another district that covers our county. We're not complaining about that. There's no way we can get one district for the whole county. You hear some people advocating uh, for carving out the island, as we call it, uh, to be covered by one district. I'm afraid to say it, most Glen Countyans do not support that cause. Okay, there are other issues won't go into that are behind that, uh, but we think we are served very well 
by our two districts. I have many other comments, but I know it's a long afternoon. You have many other speakers that want to share their opinions. I would just encourage the committee uh, and thank the committee again for all the work that uh, you are going through. I know you have more to do. Sounds like the Census Bureau is perhaps dragging their feet. That's no surprise coming out of Washington these days. Um, based on the preliminary population figures, and I know they can uh, change maybe plus or minus five, ten percent. We don't expect a lot of changes here in Glen County, and I'll just leave you with that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Witt Perrin Wright, please. No, I'm Starling Sutton, and I'm out of order, and I apologize. But if the committee will allow me to do a little of your work, I have appreciated the recognition that you have given other mayors and other cities that are here with us tonight. I would like you also to recognize that our dear mayor, Cornell Harvey, of your host city, Brunswick, has been here with us and is still with us here tonight. Thank you. Thank you for drawing my attention to that. Mayor Harvey, where are Mayor Harvey, good to see you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Was not aware he was here, so thank you, Mayor, for being here, and thanks for alerting us to that. Quit Perrin Wright. Mr. Wright? Miss Wright, excuse me. Good evening, and thank you for being here to listen. Uh, it has been interesting to me because I've had an opportunity to listen. I am a native Georgian. I grew up in northeast Georgia. I lived in the city of Atlanta for a major part of my lifetime. I lived in northwest Georgia, and in my career I've traveled all over the state of Georgia and have always followed what goes on in our government. I'm happy to be here as a citizen to be able to participate in that. And I just want to say I'm happy with our district as it's drawn. I live in Glenn County. I'm pleased with our district as it exists. I'm pleased with the first district as it exists. I know that with the numbers there may be changes, but I would simply ask that you do what you can to help maintain our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, we have Gabriel Sanchez, and then after that will be Dorothy Stewart. Hello, everybody. I'm Gabriel Sanchez. Um, I'm born and raised in Georgia, up in the metro Atlanta area. I'm coming down visiting my colleagues down here in the coastal area. I missed out on the Atlanta hearing, so I wanted to come to at least one hearing. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, I want to talk more broadly about the redistricting process. I think um, one of the things that we need to do is question the process itself because to me, when I think about it, it sounds really weird to have the people who are representing the state house districts and the state senate districts then draw those same, very same districts for themselves. Seems like a lot of conflict of interest there. I don't know, that's just me. I mean, I think about it, if you think about sports, like if two football teams play each other and then one football team wins, that's like saying, all right, well, that football team gets to pick one of their players to be the ref in the next game. Like, why are we doing that in government? Like, we are, why are sports more fair than our government? That should not be how this works. Like, and it's not just Republicans or Democrats. It's both parties do this. Whenever they're in power, the Democrats did it in 2001, the Republicans did it in 2011. I mean, in 2011, two Democrats in Atlanta were put into the same district so that there was only one left. I mean, come on. They're, like, you can think a little bit about why they did that. So, like, let's not play around here, all right? We should have fair districts, and we should have a non- partisan independent commission in control of this process solely because regardless of which party is in control they're going to do like I don't, I'm not saying y'all are bad people I know you're all good people that's fine but at the end of the day like with all due respect y'all are politicians all right you have political interests all right and those political interests are going to be involved in whatever decisions you make and regardless of what your intent is so 
we should just make it as fair and objective as possible. You know, we don't do this in sports. We shouldn't do this in our government. Our voters should pick the representatives, not the other way around. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Sanchez. Dorothy Stewart, and then on deck will be Bob Duncan. Good afternoon. My name is Dorothy Stewart. I'm a lifetime resident of Glenn County. I was a teacher for 30 plus years. Matter of fact, I'm still involved in students now. Um, and I went to school here in Brunswick, Georgia. Uh, in 2011, I ran for the school board because I believe that our children are our future. And I thought that I could be of help by continuing um, through the educational process by running for school board. Now, during this process, uh, you do have to study the maps to know where your constituents are. So in doing that, I did find out that lines are drawn in this county as well as in Georgia to make sure that certain people are elected and certain people are not elected. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, I am not satisfied with the lines. Let me make that clear. <laughs> um, also, the committee that draws up these lines are not transparent, they are not fair, and they do not have everybody's interests, good interests, when they do these things. So we need to make that clear. Now, I am for a fair, transparency, and equitable redistricting of Glenn County, state of Georgia. And I do want that to happen, and that's why I'm here today to speak on, my, on that behalf. But uh, I do think that we should have a committee to bring this before us, before you all decide. Don't let us find out again that our voices have not been heard. That's all I want to say. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Next up is Bob Duncan, followed by Rhonda Houston. Good evening. My name is Bob Duncan. Uh, keep my remarks brief. Uh, many of the things have been said this evening. It's been kind of interesting to hear some. As my brother spoke earlier, talk about mathematically, we've had about a 9% increase in population in the state. Uh, in Glenn County, I don't know if our numbers have, have tracked just below or just above the state growth. Independent of that, the lines will be very little moved for Glenn County, in my view, uh, simply because the, the numbers don't don't indicate large movement. Uh, I can understand the tweaks. I like having two representatives for our state, um, excuse me, our county, because I think it gives us two voices in Atlanta. I'm thankful for the committee members that are here. Welcome to the Golden Isles. I realize it's not your first time here. We like seeing you each time that you do come, and we like you bringing your money here to Glen County. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Duncan. Next up is Rhonda Houston, followed by Shantae Ford. Good evening, and thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. I am Rhonda Houston, and I am a Georgia citizen, born in Candler, and a resident of Chatham County for the last 40 years. Based on the testimonies tonight, we can see that Georgia is diverse and the people want to be heard and they want to be represented equally. The criteria for redistricting are contiguity, compactness, equal population, preservation of existing political communities, partisan fairness, and racial fairness. Questions I would like for the committee to consider are, can you explain the process you plan to use for drawing the maps? Are you considering race, population, and equitable representation? What are you planning to do to prevent gerrymandering? What are the processes to ensure transparency? 
Most of this has already been said tonight, but I think the more that you hear it, the more you maybe will listen and will act as the people of Georgia are asking you to do. Will you consider public hearings after initial drafts of the maps? What can we do as citizens to be assured that the reapportionment and redistricting decisions benefit the people and not the politicians? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Houston. Shante Ford is next, followed by Eric Thomas. Good evening. As I stand before you this evening in a county with a vast economic difference, one end of the spectrum, you have a zip code that is considered one of the most economical zip codes in the state of Georgia. And on the other end, within the same county, you have a zip code that is described as one of the poorest in the state. <clears throat> and yet, we are debating redistricting. I stand with a great feeling of disappointment. However, this feeling comes with no surprise. Since we live in a state that's cherished, lives, and breathes football, I must say that the field goal post is being moved once again. I pondered on my thoughts for this evening, which centers around redistricting, and primarily the rights to vote, and it comes with dismay, that America, which includes the state of Georgia, never has done anything because it was the correct or right thing to do. I speak just as you see me, as an African-American male from which my ancestors were once considered three-fifths of a person, only for the benefit of, a slavery, of slavery in the Deep South. Even Lincoln himself, who we championed as a person who freed my ancestors, stated, if I could save the Union without freeing a slave, I would do so. And here we are today, standing at the mouth of liberty, pleading to do what is right. The rules that were and are created were created not with us in mind, but with the mind to, to see if we were able to rise to the occasion. Though every time you rise to that occasion, the rules changes, not to improve, but to tear down. As you, the General Assembly's Joint Reapportionment Committee, meet to decide upon the redistricting for Georgia, consider the past from which we have come from. Consider the future of how Georgia will be looked upon in the future by our current youth. Consider the past climate that our former president produced and how this mirrors his behaviors only with a subtle tone. We are displaying an image that states, play the game, but if you lose, don't have dignity. Change the rules as you see fit. Put a little finesse to it so it doesn't appear that you are upset about the turnout, but do it in a manner where one can say we are doing so because we care about all voters. Eliminating drop-off boxes, that's not caring. Closing down certain voting locations, that's not caring. Redistricting areas for convenience, that's not caring. All of what I just mentioned proves one thing. Everything is fine as long as we are winning. Be honest, be fair, be mindful when redistricting. Thank you, Mr. Ford. Next up is Eric Thomas, followed by Diane McLeod. Eric Thomas here? No? Okay. Uh, <laughs> Diane McLeod? Is Diane McLeod here? Okay. Good afternoon, and I would like to thank you for the opportunity to be here. My name is Diane McLeod, and I currently am a resident of Bryan County, Georgia. I was born and raised in Chatham, and I've lived in South Bryan for the past 20 years. I'm here today because of my household. As I prepare my son to go to college, and we have a conversation about the future and what's going to happen, and he tells me, Ma, you know once I leave, I'm not coming back. And I want to know, Christopher, why aren't you coming back? Well, one of the reasons is because I live in a community and there is no one 
who represents me, who represents me in this community that looks like me. I live in a community where if you are a Democrat, you can't win. I live in a community where my state representative in South Bryan also represents people who live on President Street in Chatham County by the Savannah River. The gerrymandering that went on when the lines were redrawn. So the lines come across from downtown Savannah to South Bryan. Bryan County is a very unique county in the state of Georgia because Bryan County is literally split in half by Fort Stewart Base. So we have North Bryan and we have South Bryan. So instead of Bryan, South Bryan having one rep, we have two reps who come out of Chatham County. We have a rep who represents East Chatham, the islands, and then we have a rep who comes to Bryan, who, come, who comes to South Bryan and represents South Bryan from Chatham, who lit the Pooler, the I-95 corridor. What does this do to the minority representation in Bryan, in South Bryan? It dilutes the vote, it disenfranchises the vote, and ultimately it suppresses the vote. And so what I'm asking you to do is look closely when you're drawing these lines and make sure that my son has a reason to come home. Thank you, Ms. McLeod. Next we have Mayor Van Johnson. Madam Chairman, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, we're certainly glad to have you here. Uh, just a, a couple of points. Uh, as our state becomes more diverse, it's crucial that the process be equitable to all Georgians, and it's our job to ensure that we empower communities of color by exposing gerrymandered maps. Based on the voter file data, scheduled town halls released by the committee are not equitable. It excludes seven out of the 10 most populous counties in the state, most notably Gwinnett County, and then secondly, Chatham County. Uh, the reality is, is that I had the ability to have the means to get the 70 miles from Chatham County to England County, but many of the people I represent have problems traveling within Chatham County, much less being able to get down here to uh, Glen County. You deserve the opportunity to hear their voices and they have deserved the opportunity to see your faces. So any way we can help, help you to get to Chatham County, to get to Savannah, however, whenever you can make it available, we would love to have you, and I'm inviting you to come. Besides, everyone loves coming to Savannah anyway. Secondly, conducting public town halls without census data is merely lip service. Uh, to Georgians and communities of interest. The committee should commit to conducting public town hall meetings and hearings after the release of census data and drafted maps with sufficient time for concrete quality public input. As we know that conducting public input prior to the release of census data insinuates that the committee intends on utilizing other data sets uh, for the redistricting process. We hope that that is not true. Uh, but certainly that's what it would appear. What data sets are you planning to use on this committee to make informed decisions on the redistricting process? And then certainly communities of interest must make themselves available to advocate for themselves in the redistricting process. The committee must release a plan immediately for how it intends to be able to do that without publicly available census data because right now an avenue like that simply does not exist. And finally, a transparent process is vital to ensuring that voters choose their elected officials and now elected officials choose their voters. Currently, all legislative communications with the committee are considered confidential and the Georgia General Assembly is excluded from the open meetings and open records act that the city of Savannah has to comply by, which undermines public input and confidence in this process and the committee should dedicate itself 
to publicly releasing all plans and input provided to and crafted and created by members of the committee. Drafted maps distributed to and created by members of this committee should be released to the public immediately and on an ongoing basis. We cannot undermine public confidence in this process. Well, even the even thought the mere appearance of back room deals being cut in Fox uh, public hearings without full transparency. The question ultimately for you is 10 years from now, when there are other people sitting in this room and other people sitting where you're sitting, will the question be asked, what were we thinking? And what did we do? Were we able to ensure this inclusion, transparency, uh, and diversity? Or were we the hindrance of that? And so the decision that we make every 10 years determines where we go from here. And so we just ask that as you think of the present, you certainly think about how you'll be reflected in the future. God bless, and again, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next, we have Carrie Smith. And after that, will be Anna Dennis. Hi, my name is Carrie Smith. I will be Dr. Carrie Smith in December. Congratulations. The definition of democracy is demos kratia, rule of the people. So when we talk about democracy, we're trying to figure out post-COVID as a people together, America, what is that democracy, a democratic republic? So more important than the issues how do we shape that democracy? How do we progress what is fair? Rather than a policy tool used for redistricting and reapportionment to maintain a base. When we're talking about people at a local level, we're talking about a, a district that separates a street from a neighbor to another in a district. Not a gerrymandered district that doesn't make sense. A student, which is a first-generation American to be granted state funding for college. Three, a new family to get a chance to purchase a house with a two-parent household working 40 hours plus a week with a self-sufficiency wage and in a perpetual cycle of rent rather than purchasing a house. What do we do for home ownership? Four, advocacy for sustainable small business thriving to drive employment in the locality of a town from a startup to efficiency innovation and technology to lead globally. So what the public is asking you is for nonpartisan relief. A compromise to come up with the best return for the public to gain what is not popular but what is not partisan power, but what is fair. And but what is fair to engage in that American entitlement is a democracy, which is three things, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which comes down to something called a vote. Something attained through a vote, which is fair. Fair voting, which means that America is not built on rhetoric, or empty buildings, but the heart of its people. I will add that I'm half Cherokee. I am originally from Tennessee, an area called the Sequatchie Valley that saw it, the American Holocaust twice. I am what's left. And I get told I'm white, I get told that I'm this, and I get told that I'm black, I get told that I'm everything because nobody knows what race is anymore because it doesn't matter if we don't question what America is and what is fair for both black and white and what is fair for young people to have a chance rather than being bastardized not to have one at all. So if you're going to have democracy, go back to a simple concept. A democratic republic is rule of the people. Thank you, Ms. Smith. Next, we have Anna Dennis, and then our last speaker will be Clint Day. Good evening. I'm joined by Fela Dennis as well. Yes. So, um, hi, y'all. 
Thank you for having us here. Here you go, sweetie, today. Um, so I'm Anna Dennis, and I am the executive director of Common Cause Georgia, and I represent members, that is so gross, all across um, Georgia. <laughs> We are here to talk more about the transparency um, in this process. What we know about redistricting is that it happens every 10 years in Georgia, and steadily that every 10 years, there are members and people across Georgia who are being left out of the process. What we would like to see is fair maps for all communities around Georgia. That means that we want fairness of knowing when maps will be drawn, we want fairness of knowing how lines have been drawn, and we want maps to go into different communities that are not always represented at these different types of tables. So we want fairness in this process. We also want a procurement process as well, where we get written reports of how maps will be drawn and the data that will be used as well. We also want more hearings to happen not just in select parts of Georgia, not just in places that are not having inclement weather. We want it in places where everyone from the kitchen table to the backwoods, to the dirt roads, to the mountains can all be inclusive in this process. And of course, as a working mother, we want these done at multi different times. That's not just submitting a written testimony where you cannot actually include documents, but also have it during times that's more feasible for working families, or you all will continuously have folks like Sayla joining these here hearings. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Dennis. Okay. Thank you, you Sayla. <laughs> Mr. Clint Day. I'm gonna grow about five inches real quick. The heart. The heart. The heart. The heart means a lot to me right now. Because on the 14th, I had a heart attack. On the 16th, I was saved by a hospital in Jacksonville, Florida. The heart. The heart. Everybody's heart's working really good right now. I grew up in a very unique home. I grew up in a situation where my dad was Republican, my mom was Democrat. I had the five siblings. Two grew up pretty much Democrat. Three grew up Republican. Well, we went. Whatever. If, as a Republican. But I also know this. The heart's what's matter. And everybody in this room deserves representation. We know that from the bottom of our heart. Senator Kennedy, Senator, or Representative Rich, I really do appreciate y'all being here and everybody on the panel. Buddy Deloach, I think I remember when you were a Democrat. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. But I, got, I had the opportunity to serve in the state Senate in 1992. Pierre Howard was the, the lieutenant governor. He was a Democrat. I was a Republican. He always treated me right. Zell Miller always treated me right, but it was because my mama was there. They knew my mama. And I think we all have that experience. I remember when I was running for U.S. Senate in 1996, went to a retirement community in, in, near Emory University in Decatur area. And as I went up there, uh, th this lady, I gave a speech, and she looked at me, and after the meeting, I was shaking all these hands, and she said, young man, I just can't vote for you. I can't vote for you. I'm... I'm a, I'm a Democrat, and I always vote Democrat. And I said, ma'am, that's okay. My mom is a Democrat, and she's voting for me. And she said, I'm not your mama. <laughs> all right, now say all this to say all this. Just, I just think it's so important that we treat each other with respect and kindness. I think so many times, this is the first time that I've ever been in a room in a long time, where it's 50-50, roughly, Democrat-Republican. Every business card I had with me only had about 10 or 12. Most of them went to Democrats. Never met you before, heard the pastor speak, passed my card along, I'd love to talk to you. I'd love to figure out 
what we have in commonality, where we can work on together. These young people here from Savannah, wow, I'd love to know more about what you're just, you're, what, do you, what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. And so I think about different people around this state, and I think about Dr. King, who brought so many people together. I grew up in Atlanta. Our family interacted with Dr. King, and not Dr. King, but people after him, the leaders after him. Uh, Mrs. King was a very good friend of my mom's. And I just think about Alveda King, too, even today. And many of y'all know who Alveda King is. She's the niece of Dr. King. And one thing that she always says that I love, there's only really one race. It's the human race. All of our bloods, all of our blood is the same. It beats the heart. And I just want to see the whole process be, be done from the heart and treat everybody as right as we can, be as fair as we can. When I was in the state senate against a minority party, the Democrats in that group always treated me right. And it's time, instead of running from people that disagree with us, it's time to run toward them and figure out where our common interests are and move forward. God bless you. The key to me in life is to love God, love people, and speak the truth in love. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, Senator. And thank you all so much for being here. I believe that we did treat each other with respect and kindness here tonight. And I really appreciate you all um, coming out and sitting through and listening to everyone speak. It's been very helpful and very enlightening to us. Thank you for having us here. And uh, with that, this joint meeting of the redistricting committees of the Senate and the House will be adjourned. <laughs>